this is Victor from Speakeasy, and welcome to Games Less Traveled, a show where we highlight games you may have never heard of. And today, we're going to talk about The Last Campfire. In this quiet and somber puzzle adventure game, players have to find a way to help others continue a journey they are afraid to complete by taking on a series of puzzles meant to lock away hopes and courage. You control Ember, a brave being under an adorable cloak, running around trying to find those lost and frozen as a forlorn. Completing the puzzle deep within the lost embers frees them from the precipice, regaining their hopes of moving on to the other side. Now let's talk about pros and not so pros. The journey that Ember goes on cycles through dungeons, catacombs, and lost forests, all used as a symbol for the dark, empty, and lost feelings it conveys in its story themes. It's all wrapped up in these simplistic, storybook-like visuals that can be enjoyed by all ages. The themes I keep mentioning are overwhelmingly spread throughout Ember's quest to help others. But for lone embers have lost themselves due to the myriad of feelings caused by living in a purgatory setting or being afraid of what is beyond this world. Themes cover things like anxiety, loss, cowardice, co-independence, Stockholm Syndrome, and depression. What's more, with Ember's character and determination, they are able to help the forlorn through empathy, encouragement, and even accepting that others may not want help until they are able to recognize they do. That's such a powerful social and moral instance, and it's here in a video game. The Traveler whispered, used to be a river all around here. Watched the birds build the dam night and day. Took them forever, they had no clue what they were doing. It was hilarious. The narration is done by Rachel Augustin, and I bring this up because she brings another level of immersion for the storytelling in The Last Campfire. Her narration adapts the context of the story, such as urgency of beasts being nearby, or the whimsy of meeting a quirky new friend. You hate it, don't you? That is such a relief. It really warms my pistons. I'm so happy. Her loose impressions of character speaking made me feel as though she was reading a storybook to me, unfolding the narrative with me as I move Ember through it. The narrator's presence really ties the experience together. Have a little taste, but it's not right yet. It was the most beautiful thing Ember had ever tasted. I know. It's got no flavor, nothing special. Ember wished the cook would believe them. I tend to notice technical issues more when they're in a narrative-focused game because I'm paying close attention to the nuance and foreshadowing in the game's presentation. None of it will offend the gameplay or break the game, but it's just more jarring in a simpler game than one overloaded with graphics and information. So if you like approachable takes on somber themes, The Last Campfire is for you. While the story might be dense for younger audiences, the narration and in-game guide will keep you happy throughout your 6-8 to eight hour gameplay. Also. There are nice touches like non-binary pronouns and minimal control scheme that truly make this game accessible for more players. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got a game that you feel like no one's talking about, let us know and we'll be sure to check it out and maybe even feature it in the next episode of Games Less Traveled. And until then, happy travels.